Hello, this is Harper. I'm back with you guys. And I've been watching everybody back and forth on social media. I've been keeping up with all the political um, elements that goes on for various reasons. Yes, I am an American Negro. And a lot of you know me that and I apologize for not being here, but there's a reason why I haven't been here. I'm watching the go back and forth with uh, my group, American Descendant of Slavery, with our foundational black Americans and so forth, and the uh, new voices of black media. However, I just came to say that I know that people want everything to be unified and balanced, but you got to separate the wheat from the tear. And this is what's going on right now. We are locked in an element which we have to execute. If we don't, our very lives are at stake. We have a reparations um, agenda, and that's the most enforcing important thing I think that we need to look at because simply because with the, uh, the fact that this is a controlled society and a government-based situation, everyone is basically wrapped in the political arena of what we can access as a group. And other people have reparations. They have packages where they can access lifestyles to catapult them in a respect which makes them fully American. They're not uh, locked away from wealth or contagion to wealth as the American Negro. And there's a reason why the American Negro is positioned that way. It's a reason why that it has happened that way because we have been the only group in the country that has been tremendously affected in brutalization in terms of bringing the country wealth. We were brought here to bring a nation wealth, and this is what they have executed. And our minds have been colonized in terms of who we are and what our aim should be. And the second law uh, is self-preservation, which we don't have. And that's what we're designing right now, self-preservation. Self-preservation is very important, and we don't have that as a people. We are feeding from the bottom in intellect, intellectually and financially and so forth. So, therefore, when other groups have a disdain with the government, a lot of times black politicians and the Congressional Black Caucus, we stand up for these people in terms of subservitude as the code of conduct. And we don't have any room to be standing up for anybody. We need self-preservation. Okay, that's very necessary. And we believe also that other groups exist the way we do because we have normalized the way we exchange. Does not mean other groups exist this way. Other groups exist in self-preservation. They exist in capital. We don't have any capital, even in terms of rich black people. Even in terms of that, we don't have any capital. We, we, don't, we are not a unit, a successful unit inside the society. Now, we are a strong unit inside the society, but not a successful unit. We will be a successful unit as we continue. However, we have been divided, and our intellects have been colonized, and things have happened to us in terms of that, which has positioned us in this way. And, 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 and there's a lot of things that we as black people don't know about ourselves, and we don't really know who we are. And I say this all the time. We're not Africans. We have African descent. We're an American Negro, so to speak. We are mixed with the, my great-grandfather's Irish. There were bedwitches. Our women were bedwitches. The Indians mixed with the, with the slaves. We are the American Negro. We are very unique people. There's 45 million of us in this country. And the government owes us almost $20 trillion. And we need to look into that so that we have what you call protected class citizenship. And I don't think black people really know what this is and really know what America is the first, is the first world where people come here accessing capital over our heads and catapult, and now which they also have economic slaves. It's not just white people, and we're not in field slaves, but economically we're in subservitude because we have not been corrected in terms of the government policy, and there's laws that have been passed but not implemented in terms of us. And that's, that means like the first, second, I mean the um, um, protected class citizenship, First class citizenship. All that stuff is supposed to belong to us as black people. And outside of the Indians, we are the only real natives because slavery was inbred in this country. So we still don't know who we are. Once we know who we are by lineage, we can exist We can exist in this place with a real reality and we can execute in terms of that. But we can't do it if we have bought into social illusions. 
This is what this is. And if we come together as a unit in terms of awareness and what we should know and how we should approach the situation, we will execute because we control the vote. A lot of times we can swing the vote in which way we want it to go. And that doesn't mean I'm saying vote um, Democrat or Republican, but I, I, Democrat, I don't trust you because they have a law, they have a um, benign neglect. And this is why we're in the shape because they have, as a Democrat, big government has choose to abandon us as a unit. So I don't trust them. I would rather my, I would rather go Republican actually, because at least Republican to me is more transparent. Um, is lesser evils, if you ask me. But this is what I'm saying to us. I think we need to really be careful in terms of not knowing who we are and what actually happened to us and things being wiped away without us being able to do diligence in terms of who we are and how we got in this place. This is the United States of America. Our blood is in that flag. We are the guts of this country, the guts and the blood of this country. We were brought here to break, make a nation wealthy and it executed. And we are the only people without any political incentives for solely for ourselves. That's a problem. That's a loss that also that has been broken in terms of us. So we need to continue to push forward and understand what really is happening and what really has happened and not continue to let fame and fortune and iconic icons be our God. And they have put rappers on the front line where we are emulating this element and coming up missing and different sorts of things of that nature. Those are degenerates. A lot of times we don't know these things. Black people are being used to exploitation of wealth in every way possible. No, this is not actual field slavery, but this is economic slavery and subservitude. And we shouldn't be in this space and we don't have any capital and we should access capital. Brian Allen has did a good thing by fighting Comcast and winning in the Supreme Court. We get it. And we have to know that we're powerful people, obviously, because the Supreme Court had to agree with our substantial argument in terms of the 1865 law, um, civil rights. So we have to understand who we are, and that's the lineage. Once we understand that, we can go forth. But I just wanted to come and announce that we need to go, go look forward. And yes, I have a lot of respect for Yvette Cornell because she's political. She's not really playing games. I know she said some stuff. I know she was disdained about some stuff that I also feel that maybe she shouldn't have done or said. However, overall, she's very methodical about what she's doing, and she's a, almost like a politician and not a game player. Now, we can try to correct and move forward. That's all we can do, and we can persevere in terms of the law. This is very important. It's almost biblical. When it comes down to how we are positioned, our lives are at stake in terms of what we can access and how we can settle and, and truly be an American. This is our country. We built it. Blood sacrifice. So in terms of saying that, let's just go forth and understand that anybody can say what they want. Professor Black Truth, I have a lot of respect for, you, for him or for you, but this is the thing. We need to pipe down and pipe up. If you know what I mean, we need to pipe down and pipe up. The only real person that I heard lately through our listening to all the argument is Yvette Cornell and Antonio Moore, because we got Tariq Nasheed and he's going around saying stuff that's very untrue and that he doesn't really have any facts about. And it's clownish. It's very clownish. It's not. And I respect this man. His idea of things to me was always very powerful, but you have to look at the reality of the situation and actually who's saying this and whether or not they're being honest and telling truths. That speaks volumes in terms of leadership. You know, and um, I'm really not going to say a lot about Professor Black Truth because I think he has a, a very anchored iota, I mean, a very anchored um, ideology. However, I don't agree with everything. I don't, and I don't have to. Because I think sometimes instead of us going with the ideology in terms of being deep, we should also first be receptive to a new ideology in terms of what's really going on and not what we have as an ideology. So in terms of going forward, 
I go with ADOS, American Descendant of Slavery. And I go with it because we have a reparations agenda. And that's foremost important, no matter what your personal endeavor is. If we're not corrected in the political arena, then we're going to continue to feed from the bottom in the society which we built. And we will suffer and still live third world elements by everyone else. Not just white people, but also constituents to the powers that be. We'll live happily and ever after inside the land of our captivity. In the land which we have built blood sacrifice. In the land of our humiliation and brutalization. Okay? Brutalization. This is not what we want. This is not what it is. And we continue to move forward. And I think ADOS has a very relevant claim. And I'm a part of that claim. And I'm not a joker or a player about what we need as people in self-preservation. And black people, stop taking up for illegal immigrants. You don't have to take up for anybody who has been respected by this country. And they also have capital in this country. We don't need to stand for anyone but ourselves. We're still behind in terms of business, camaraderie in the community, and in terms of government policy. We don't have the um, we don't have the clout in the the space to be caping for other people when we have gone uncorrected to this degree. Thank you for joining me. This is Harper.